Victini Gamer here, and it's been way too long since I made a video like this, so, well, it's time to make it. Welcome to an episode of Let's Say, where instead of playing the game, I actually talk about it. So, since Arlen Sino has been teased already for version 4.6, and since version 4.5 is going to be releasing soon, we're gonna be getting the beta version of 4.6 in, well, just a few days. And people are just gonna data mine it, and we're probably going to see what Arlen Sino's kit is. Since people probably don't know what her kit is, we just have to speculate. Could she be a Pyro DPS? Could she be a Pyro Sub DPS? And that got me thinking. If Arlen Sino is a Pyro Sub DPS, would she replace Zhang Ling? Because, well, as the topic of the title of the video, Zhang Ling right now in the state of Genshin Impact is literally unrivaled compared to her competitors. She is basically way too good at her own niche, her own category, which is just sub DPS, which isn't even a niche at all because, well, a lot of people run her as a main sub DPS on those teams in Spiral Abyss. Every Spiral Abyss team you see who needs a Pyro Applicator and also needs big Pyro damage, you see Zhang Ling and no other person out there besides a few exceptions like Toma or Chevrus on an Overload team. But that's basically about it. Mainly all Pyro sub DPS niches filled has to go to Zhang Ling because Zhang Ling is the only Pyro sub DPS to fill that niche anyway. So that got me thinking. Why is Zhang Ling extremely good compared to her other competitors? Well, today in this episode of Let's Say, we're going to find out that reason. So, without any further ado, let's talk about it. So, in order to understand why she's better than to her competitors, we have to talk about her base kit. So, we have to understand the kit in order to understand the reason why she crushes the competition compared to her other fellow Pyro sub DPSs. So, without any further ado, let's check out Zhang Ling's kit. So, as I said before, in order to understand the reason why she is broken, we have to take a look at her kit first. Meaning her talents, her constellations, her artifact combinations, and her weapons. That is mainly a buildup of a character, and that'll basically tell us why she is good in the first place. So, let's talk about it. So, Let's see her talents. So, mainly her bread and butter is going to be her burst. That is the main reason why she is the best Pyro sub DPS out there. That's because her burst just does way too much damage. And there's also other factors to the reason why she is also a pretty good Pyro DPS besides her burst. And that is tied to her E as well. Yeah, Guoba. You'd be surprised. Guoba is actually pretty good too. Um, it's not just Pyro Nato that does all the work. Guoba also does work too. And that is also, uh, well, boosted by her passive talents and her constellations. So let's take a look at these to really explain why these are broken. So let's take a look. So this increases the range of Globa, meaning that Globa is able to attack even further. Meaning that, well, instead of it being pushed away a lot, it could at least attack it. Yeah, that's mainly an issue in Spiral Abyss where Globa gets pushed away, but at least he's able to somewhat reach his opponents if he does get pushed away. But that is not the main reason why Globa's good. It's because of this. So when Globa's attack ends, basically when he eats his fifth bite of the chili, I think, he's able to increase the attack of party members as long as you pick up that chili pepper as soon as he despawns. So yeah, not only are you doing pile damage, you're able to get an attack boost, meaning that Zhang Ling can also support the team as well. And that's not just it. Her constellations also do the same thing too. When she does Pyro Nando, all party members get Pyro damage bonus, including herself, meaning that her burst just does way too much damage. That's not all. Her C4 increases Pyro Nando's uh, duration by 40%, meaning that your burst is a 14 second burst with a six second cooldown. That is busted as crap. Also, you're able to do AoE Pyro damage based off Zhang Ling's attack, which is really busted. And also, you decrease the opponent's Pyro resistance when Globa attacks them. So yeah, all you have to do is attack with Globa once, and the Pyro res gets decreased. Not only that, you're getting 10% attack, 
you're getting a 14 second burst with a pile damage bonus on top of that. And also you're able to do more pile damage as well thanks to her C2. You know the reason why she's broken? You probably already see why. It's because her burst damage is absolutely crazy. And well, since this is a level 11 talent, you see here that is way too much damage on burst. Way too broken. Look at that. Yeah. And it circles around her for 14 seconds, by the way. That is a really long time for a burst. Also, not only um, is her burst really broken, her artifact and weapon combination is also broken too, and it tailors to her burst. That is the reason why she is extremely broken, because there are weapons and artifacts out there that boost her kit even further. So, with the artifact set, like Emblem of Severed Fate, which is her best pyro sub DPS set, you're able to increase your elemental burst damage based on your energy recharge. So the more energy recharge you have, the stronger your burst is. And since Zhang Ling is all about the burst, you can probably already imagine what number she's able to pull off. As long as you give her a lot of crit rate crit damage, you're gonna see 50k's up the wazoo with her. And also, her weapon choices are pretty good too. You can run Dragon's Bane, which is a pretty long um, weapon or long-term weapon for Zhang Ling. At least until the catch exists. Yeah, the catch. If you don't know what that weapon is, you literally get it by fishing. Yeah, all you have to do is fish and then get the shop materials and you literally get the catch. It's that easy. You can literally get her best weapon for free, <laughs> which is extremely busted. So yeah. And also, the cherry on top of why Zhang Ling is extremely good and also why no one can contend to her is that you get her for free. Yeah, you get her for free if you get Adventure Rank 20. Like, are you serious? Yeah. So, why run all other power sub DPSs out there when you can run a free one that you can get? You can get her pull arm for free. You can just farm the artifacts for her anyway. Her constellations are easy to get because she's literally a day one character who's like basically on every banner. And also she's also in the shop. And she's really easy to level up because all she needs is chilies that you can get in the wild. So yeah. Um, there's nothing for me to say here except Zhang Ling is just way too good on every single aspect. Literally one of the best power sub DPSs in the game and she's free. Literally free. <laughs> so, now that we discussed why Zhang Ling is extremely broken, let's take a look at our competitors and finally hammer down the reason why Zhang Ling basically cannot be compared to any other Pyro Sub DPS out there. So, we all took a look at her base kit. We already know that she is good because she is an extremely broken Pyro Sub DPS where all her damage lies on her burst, able to do big damage on burst, with weapons and artifacts to support her, as well as constellations to further boost her pyro damage. So, what does her other competitors have? Well, let's take a look, and let's take a deep dive into their sub-DPS spectrum. So, first up, we have Toma here, who can qualify as a sub-DPS, but... There is just one problem with him. He is a Pyro sub DPS that is reliant on his burst. That is also a shield. Yeah, you know the reason why he is not a Pyro sub DPS because I said the word. And if you did pay attention, you already know why. He's a shielder. Yeah, he protects his team. He doesn't deal damage. He can deal damage, but if you are going to be dealing damage, you're sacrificing HP. And if you're sacrificing HP, you're sacrificing your shield. So yeah. And also, his talents further boost his support capabilities as well as being a shielder. He's literally just a shielder. <laughs> Nothing more. Because, well, since he is good on Bergen teams because he can protect his team from Bergen reactions. And Bergen reactions, well, they damage your team. So having a shield there basically negates the Bergen reaction. So yeah. Um, that is the reason why Toma is really good on his specific teams, but he's not good on sub DPS. So he can't be run on basically any other sub DPSs because he's a shielder support. While Zhang Ling can just be ran on any team because she does way too much damage. Basically, if you want to blitz the abyss, run Zhang Ling. If you can't, then I guess, uh, well, build your Zhang Ling better. But Toma is not it. Toma is a shield support. And, well, let's take a look at his talents. As you see here, 
he increases shield strength. For here, increase max HP. And he needs HP to basically keep the shield up. His C6 increases normal charge and plunging for all party members, meaning that he has to be off field to basically uh, enhance every other party member's burst, which also Zhongling can be off field too because she's a sub DPS. But for Toma's instance, you want the other characters to do damage anyway, while his burst basically just does pyro application, so you can do either melt or vaporize or basically any other element that can combo with uh, pyro. Here he basically gets ER back, meaning he gets energy back. This increases the duration and this decreases the cooldown. So yeah, everything is tailored to his Q, which is a support. Again, I will say it again, shield strength, energy recharge. So you can basically get your uh, thing back. He scales off of HP, meaning that the more HP you have, the higher your shield is. And also, he's able to do pyro application as well, and his, well, literal burst doesn't do that much damage anyway, compared to Zhongling's damage scaling. So yeah, uh, Toma, he is extremely niche on his field, and he can't be run as a sub DPS. You can try though, you can try, but he is mainly a shielder support, so yeah. But he's extremely good on Bergen teams if you are going to be running him as a sub. <laughs> Next up is Chevrus, who can also be run as a sub, and he is basically the same as Toma. She is literally just a support. Literally it, nothing more. And, well, that is because it is tied to this right here. Her literal talent that basically increases damage based off her max HP. So she's basically like Toma. You need HP, energy, recharge. And since you need HP, if you sacrifice HP for damage, you're basically sacrificing this talent, meaning that you can't deal attack. You can't increase the attack of your fellow Pyro and Electro party members. So yeah. Also, her Q and E are basically pretty basic. Her E heals. She's literally a support that heals your party members. Her Q is just big damage Q. Yeah, <laughs> that's literally it. That's probably the only thing close enough you could get to being a sub DPS. But she needs her burst in order to do her ease anyway because, well, perfect segue to her talents right there. But um, her talents are tailored to her constellations. So yeah, um, as see for her talent right here, Pyro and Electro Res decrease. Yeah, you need that really, really badly. And that's only if you do E and other stuff to get overload reactions right there. And her constellations also further boost that too with pyro and electro damage bonus as well so yeah you see the reason why she needs to be ran as a support instead of a sub dps because she literally fills the support role better than a sub dps it's just like toma basically where he fills the support role better than the sub dps role so yeah it's really really not surprising why they are better as a support than a sub dps and the reason why zhang ling is basically better than them and keep in mind, those two are the closest thing to basically a sub DPS um, competing with Zhang Ling, by the way. So yeah, that basically compares and also basically tells you how powerful Zhang Ling is. She's literally so good that no other power sub DPS could even compare to her because other power sub DPSs have to fill their niche. While Zhang Ling, you can just slap her on any team and she performs really well. For Chevras, it's overload, as you see here. Look at this. As you see here, it decreases the cooldown there, which boosts her C6. Right here, it increases damage. And right here, she gets energy back. So, what does this tell you? Chev is a support. She is a glorified overload support. So, basically, it's better to run her as a support than a sub DPS. So, yeah, that's basically it. So, now you're re-asking. Well, since Toma and Chevrus are basically the same thing, where they are just better as supports than sub DPSs, what about the characters that can basically be ran as a sub DPS? Can't they compare to Zhang Ling? The answer is kind of no. <laughs> and well, let's just go. Let's just go over the three Pyro characters in mind that people have. First up is Xinyan. Yes, Xinyan can also be a Pyro sub DPS, but she is wonky at that. She is extremely wonky compared to Zhongling. Because for Zhongling gameplay, all you have to do is use E and Q. Simple as that. 
for Shinyan, if you want the maximum possible pyro damage bonus potential, you have to hit two people. Yeah, you have to hit two people. This means that you have to have crowds, basically uh, mob fights in Spiral Abyss. If there's no mob fights, she can't get her pyro damage out, which damages over time. Also, she is just like Toma, where she needs defense for her damage absorption. So you have to run her in either two ways. One, run her with defense percent. Two, run her with attack. It's really, really weird. But people are going to be opting for the defense so that she's able to basically damage absorb. But you also need the attack too because her burst just does too much damage. So yeah, it's really, really weird. And besides, her burst does more physical damage than pyro damage anyway. So yeah, why run her with a pyro sub when you can run her as a main DPS? But yeah, it's she is really, really wonky. <laughs> so it's either you hit two opponents because, well... If you have this passive talent, you basically get the uh, trigger thing by one. So basically, instead of hitting one opponent, it counts as two instead. And besides, um, using her E, by the way, increases physical damage, meaning that your burst just does more damage in general. Yeah, it's really, really weird. So basically, she becomes a sub-DPS physical character instead of a sub-DPS pyro character. So yeah, it's either you run her as a pyro character with defense percent, which basically is just rip off Toma at that point. Or you run her as a physical damage dealing burst nuker. So yeah, it's either one of those two ways. So yeah, it's really, really, really weird. But yeah, uh, I guess you could consider Shinyan a uh, sub DPS, but she's mainly ran as a main DPS because her kit is basically just a main DPS kit. And well, Last but not least, in the 4-star spectrum, we have Amber, who is basically just, I guess, a worse version of Zhang Ling. I'm dead serious, because, well, you get Amber for free, right? Who else do you get for free? I mentioned it before, didn't I? Yeah, Zhang Ling. You get Zhang Ling for free. So, what would you rather run? Amber or Zhang Ling? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Go on to her talents. So, let's see here. We have her burst, which basically uh, submits her as a sub DPS, and her elemental skill. Her elemental skill is actually pretty okay because, well, his HP scales off of HP. Yeah, it's really, really weird. The buddy's HP scales, but you don't need HP anyway because its main purpose is to explode dealing pyro damage. It's just basically gone use E, but I guess just for pyro damage. And her burst is not really that bad. I mean, it has pretty good damage scaling, that's for sure. But then again, you could just use uh, Zhang Ling, and she can basically compare numbers with her anyway. And besides, her weapon choice isn't that great either. It's really, really weird. She's basically just discount Zhang Ling. And by the way, Zhang Ling's a day one character. So if you compare a day one character to this day one character, it's like a night and day difference. It's really, really weird. They made Amber like a pyro sub DPS that you can get for free, but Zhang Ling's also free to get. So like, why would you run Amber over Zhang Ling when Zhang Ling has the better kit? It's really, really weird. And well, since Hoya will never buff their own characters, Amber will just be sitting here doing nothing because Zhang Ling is just going to be taking her spotlight anyway. It's really sad, but true. But there are dedicated Amber fans out there who are able to keep her alive, so I will salute to you guys. But we're talking about the actual stats where people actually do use Zhang Ling over Amber. So yeah, Amber is literally worse than Zhang Ling because she has literally a worse kit than her. Because, well, her burst doesn't last that long. I mean, look at that, two seconds. Are you kidding me? <laughs> her E is not really that great, while Globa just could just decrease the pyro res. The, her talents are literally kind of bad. This literally just increases the crit rate by 10 and increases the AoE by 30. Sure, you can hit a lot of enemies, but it doesn't stay on you that long. I mean, look at it, two seconds, right? <laughs> This literally increases her aim at attack by 15% on weak points. Some bosses don't even have weak points, by the way. 
Her constellations aren't really good either. Her Q just increases movement speed and attack by 15%. I mean, sure, okay, I guess. But what does Globa do on C1? Yeah, you guessed correctly. Decrease Pyro Res. And what does Zhongling do on C6? Increases Pyro Damage. Yeah, it's really, really weird. Also, her other constellations aren't really great either. This literally gives her an additional charge on um, Baron Bunny, which is okay, I guess. You could just do two pops of Baron Bunny and you're able to do Pyro Damage. And this just manually detonates Burn Bunny where you shoot its foot and it does 200 more damage. So basically you need to have her on field more anyway to do that. But she's a Pyro Sub DPS and what do Pyro Sub DPSs do? They have to be off field. So not even Amber can become a good Pyro Sub DPS because she has to be on field for like several seconds. And besides, in those several seconds she'll be exposed anyway. While well, Zhongling pop burst, quick switch or quickly switch out. It is that simple. Well, Amber, you just have to go through hoops and hurdles just to get her to work. So yeah, it's really, really weird. A day one Pyro DPS character and another day one Pyro DPS character who is literally 10 times better than the uh, literal first Pyro character that you get in the game. What would you rather run? Exactly. And well, that leaves me to the last character who could be considered a Pyro sub DPS. And that is Deha. Yeah, since I don't have Deha, I have to go to the character archives to talk about her. So yeah. As for Deha, she's really weird. She's a main DPS, a sub, and a support at the same time. It's really, really weird and really, really confusing. So yeah. So what makes her a support and sub DPS? It's her E. So she's able to do pile damage on E, which basically summons a sigil that attacks. Think of it like Albedo's E where it just does geo damage, instead it just does AoE power damage. Also, the attack is based off her attack and HP. And, well, you can use different artifacts to mix and match her gameplay style, but her main artifact is her best artifact. So, yeah, you could just take that instead. And, well, it's really weird because she drains HP, but she also heals herself at the same time, which is, I guess, okay. I mean, look at this. Damage, heal on max HP. Yeah, really weird. And, well, since the duration is kind of okay at 12 seconds, her damage scaling isn't that great either. The only good reason why she is a really good um, pile DPS, or at least can somewhat contend with the others, is because it's tied to her E and not her burst. So yeah, basically, you could just use E and then you could just leave it alone for a while and then you could just do another um, character and just attack with that, able to do power reactions, and then use her E again. That is her saving grace. She's able to just use E and then you can leave her alone for a while and then you can just use E again, which is really weird. Her constellations are, are really weird too. I'm only going to be talking about the first two because these matter. This literally decreases the um, duration on um, the thing on damage so yeah basically if you want her to do more damage than before you want to get her c2 because with c2 she's able to basically decrease the interval on damage which is really really good and also it increases the um, duration of her e by six seconds which is really really good meaning that you're able to get a lot of mileage on her 18 seconds field duration by the way if you have her c2 so yeah, you can basically have this for a really long time and then just leave her alone for a while and then you can just do damage. But again, you probably already know the reason why. I mean, look at this. Damage bonus on max HP. So yeah, it's really weird. You need max HP, but you also need attack. So yeah, it's basically really weird. It's just like Shinyan, where you need defense and attack. But for her, it's HP and attack, which is really weird. So... You probably already know the reason why she kind of is worse than Zhang Ling. That's because Zhang Ling, all you have to do is run attack percent and you're good. For Deha, you need to run HP and attack percent, which is, well, you already know how wonky that is because you have to run crit rate, crit damage, attack percent, HP percent. Yeah, it's really, really, really wonky. And also, you need her C2. And besides, she's a five star, a literal five star. So yeah, you have to get a 1 out of 6 chance to even get her in the first place. And that is not including the 50-50 lose because she is a base roster character. So yeah, you have to lose 50-50 first of all. And then you have to basically get a 1 out of 6 chance to even get her in the first place. 
And that is just getting her at C0. You have to get her at C2 to basically make her at least compete with the other power sub DPSs. So yeah, it's really, really wonky. So yeah, um, in the end, uh, for Zhang Ling, all you have to do is just use E and Q. For Deha, you have to go through hoops and hurdles yet again. So yeah. And that is her fellow competitors, or Zhang Ling's fellow competitors. So now that we know the reason why um, her other competitors can't, pair, can't compare to Zhang Ling, let's go over to the conclusion. Let's see, and let's answer the question. Why is Zhang Ling better than her other competitors? Let's find out. And so, here we arrive at the conclusion. So, why is Zhang Ling better than her other competitors? That's because her other competitors suck at being a Pyro sub DPS compared to her. And that means that her other competitors are literally better at other things other than sub DPSs. That's mainly the main reason why Zhang Ling is not compared to other Pyro sub DPSs. Because there's no other Pyro sub DPS to compare to Zhang Ling to because Zhang Ling is just way too broken. Her kit is literally meant to be a Pyro sub DPS while the other characters kits are either uh, too niche or has to be run on another team or are basically better on any other teams other than uh, teams that need a Pyro sub DPS or are literally worse versions of Zhang Ling. Well, let's go over the competitors one more time. So Toma, he's good on Bergen teams, but he has to be run as a shield support. So basically, he's better ran as a sub DPS support hybrid on Bergen teams. For Chevras, you need to run her as a support because if you run her as a sub, you're basically missing out on her support capabilities. So basically, run her with HP and energy recharge because she's literally better as a support than a sub DPS. And trust me, you need her as a support in order to make your overlord teams good anyway. Shinyan, she literally has to be run as a sub and main DPS at the same time because, well, she is scaled off of physical damage, meaning that she can't even be a power sub DPS to begin with. So she's mainly more a, a physical damage support um, sub DPS and main DPS hybrid. And for Amber, she's literally a worse version of Zhang Ling that you can't even use because Zhang Ling's already there in the first place. She's literally a four-star character that can't even compare to another four-star character that you can get for free. So literally, you choose four-star Zhang Ling for free over Amber, who is literally free as well. So basically, choose the better option. <laughs> That's literally it. And for Deha, she's literally a five-star that you have to have C2 to even make her at least usable. Uh, at C0, Deha is good as a support because she's able to heal and also do a lot of things as well. But other than that, Deha is just really hard to get anyway, while Zhang Ling is free. So yeah, basically, Zhang Ling rules all because all her other competitors can't compare to her because all her other competitors are literally worse than Zhang Ling. That's literally it. So yeah, I know this is a really heavy opinion and I know it's really opinionated to why Zhang Ling is better than any Pearl sub DPS. So yeah, um, I, it's a really, really um, heavy topic to talk about and I really wanted to cover it. So yeah, um, it'll be a great uh, Let's Say video and I'm pretty sure um, a lot of people will basically um, now get the idea why uh, Zhang Ling is basically better than any other Pyro sub DPS out there because she literally is well She knocks it out of the park on that. So yeah, that's literally the conclusion Well, anyways, if you guys like this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new as well And turn on the notification video if you do subscribe um, To basically not miss out on a single upload I do any amount of support is greatly appreciated you guys fuel my passion if you do subscribe and like the channel. Any amount of support is so, so much appreciated. Well, I just can't thank you guys enough. So, uh, thank you guys for supporting the channel. You literally make my day. You literally uh, are my motivation to keep going on this channel. So, yeah. Uh, thank you guys so much for the support. And, well, since this is an opinionated video, and since it is a Let's Say video, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think of Zhang Ling? You think she is literally unrivaled, can't even be compared to any other Pyro sub DPS out there? 
Or do you think her other Pyro Sub DPS um, competitors are better than Zhang Ling? Or do you think that they can be basically at the same level at Zhang Ling? And also, since Arlen Sino is going to come out in the future anyway, and we have to throw in a discussion, what do you think Arlen Sino might be? You think she might overthrow Zhang Ling if she is a Pyro Sub D DPS? Or do you think she'll just be another Pyro main DPS? What do you guys think? <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. It'll be a great discussion for sure. And well, anyways, thank you guys for watching this Let's Say video. And I'll see you guys in the next Genshin video.